The next fundamental right is cultural and educational rights. Article 29 stipulates that the state shall not impose upon it any culture other than the community's own culture. A minority community has the right to preserve its culture and religious interests. Article 30 confers upon a minority community the right to establish and administer educational institutions of its choice. The state is not to discriminate in granting aid to institutions on the ground that it is under the management of a particular minority. Full compensation has to be paid if the state seeks to acquire the property of a minority educational institution. These rights belong to citizens. Right to constitutional remedies. Realizing the futility of granting rights without an effective machinery for their enforcement, the constitution makers included in chapter 3 itself the right to constitutional remedies. Article 32 guarantees to a person the right to move the Supreme Court directly for the enforcement of his fundamental rights. The Supreme Court can issue various kinds of writs for the enforcement of these rights. The right to constitutional remedies shall not be suspended except as otherwise provided in the Constitution, that is, during emergency under Article 352. Article 32 has been called the cornerstone of the entire edifice set up by the Constitution. Dr. Ambedkar called it the very soul of the Constitution and the very heart of it. Saving of Laws Articles 31, Clause A, Article 31, Clause B and Article 31, Clause C are meant to validate and save certain laws which may otherwise be ultra vires the Constitution. Article 31 Clause A protects certain laws dealing with the acquisition of property by the state, abolition of the zamindari system, etc., regardless of what is provided by the fundamental rights in Articles 14 and 19. Article 31 Clause B saves the acts and regulations placed in the ninth schedule of the Constitution. These laws shall not be deemed void on the ground of any inconsistency with any fundamental right. A law placed in the ninth schedule cannot be questioned for its validity in court. However, for a law to get protected by Article 31 Clause B, a constitutional amendment is required to place the concerned law in the ninth schedule. Article 31 Clause C protects a law if it has been made to implement the directive principles in Part 4. Restrictions by Parliament Parliament has the power to modify the application of the fundamental rights to the members of the armed forces or police forces so as to ensure proper discharge of their duties and maintenance of discipline amongst them, as in Article 33. When martial law has been in force in any area, Parliament may, by law, indemnify any person in the service of the Union or a State for any act done by him in connection with the maintenance or restoration of order in an area under martial law as stated in Article 34. Article 35 stipulates that Parliament alone can legislate on certain matters to give effect to some of the provisions of this part. 
suspension of rights the freedoms guaranteed under article 19 are automatically suspended on the proclamation of national emergency during such a proclamation no law or executive order issued by the state can be challenged on the ground that it is inconsistent with the rights guaranteed by article 19 the president may by order under article 359 suspend the enforcement of other fundamental rights but these orders may be approved by the parliament also articles 20 and 21 cannot be suspended by any order under article 359 amendability the extent of parliament's right to abridge the fundamental rights has been a controversial issue since the supreme court's judgment in the golaknath case in 1967 the court ruled that parliament had no power to amend any of the provisions of part 3 so as to take away or abridge fundamental rights as guaranteed by the constitution while upholding the validity of amendments made so far the court rejected the contention that parliament was a supreme body and could amend any part of the constitution the 24th amendment 1971 authorized parliament to amend any part of the constitution including part 3 in the keshavanand bharti case the supreme court formally conceded this right to the indian parliament However, it stipulated that parliament could not destroy the basic structure of the constitution. To make the fundamental rights easily amendable, the 42nd amendment was enacted in 1976, declaring in unambiguous terms that parliament had unlimited power to amend the constitution. The only obstacle in parliament's way is the judicial pronouncements on basic features of the constitution a doctrine that can be eliminated only if a bench larger than the 13 judge bench in keshavanand bharti case is prepared to overturn the case in 1980 in the minerva mills case the supreme court struck down some provisions of the 42nd amendment which gave unlimited amending power to parliament Though the court had not defined the features constituting the basic structure of the constitution its subsequent rulings indicate that article 14 that is right to equality and article 19 that is personal freedom are to be considered basic features of the constitution so parliament is not authorized to limit the operation of these two articles are the fundamental rights of any use There has been criticism of the fundamental rights as incorporated in our constitution. It is pointed out that the restrictions and exceptions enmeshing these rights make them anything but fundamental. In conditions of emergency, important rights can be suspended. This militates against the concept of democracy itself. and it is not easy to defend preventive detention and several other laws that curtail citizens freedom without trial true the fisiparous and anti democratic tendencies present at the time of independence which exist to an extent even now forced the founding fathers to compromise in this context however one cannot quite condone the concept of preventive detention in the chapter of fundamental rights it justifies the criticism that the indian constitution deals more with the rights of the state against the individual than with the individual's rights against the state some critics feel that the rights benefit only a few in the country mainly the rich The constitution makes no difference between the rich and the poor. But in practice, the poor are unable to demand or fight for their rights as they do not have the money to go to court. The rich with the capacity to go to court 
are able to stand up for their rights and at times even succeed in malpractices. Besides, many of these rights obstruct progressive legislation in the interest of socio-economic development. If one subscribes to the idea of a democratic polity, one cannot quite agree with the idea of removing the rights to facilitate social welfare. All said and done, the Fundamental Rights chapter does check state tyranny, which could ensue in the name of social welfare measures. The right way is to empower the disadvantaged sections of the population with free legal aid and educate all people about their rights as well as duties. In this context, one may recall a recent development. Public interest litigation that has taken up the cuddles on behalf of the downtrodden. The object of the PIL or public interest litigation is to see that provisions of the constitution or the law are enforced for advancing the cause of community or weaker sections of society or individuals at the behest of a person having no private motivation or gain from such litigation. Fundamental rights are basic to a democratic polity and with all the shortcomings of their enunciation in our constitution, their inclusion in the constitution has served the nation well. Directive Principles of State Policy Part 4 of the constitution, that is articles 36 to 51, contains the directive principles of state policy. Finalized by the SAPRU committee, these directives are in the nature of directions to the legislative and executive wings of government to be observed while formulating laws and policies. Most of them aim at the establishment of economic and social democracy which is pledged for in the preamble. A survey of the principles. Articles 36 and 37 define the term state and lay down that the provisions in part 4 shall not be enforceable by courts. However, the principles are fundamental in the governance of the country. Article 38 directs the state to promote the welfare of the people and to secure a just social order. The 44th Amendment, in particular, calls upon the state to minimize inequalities in income and try to eliminate inequalities of status, facilities and opportunities. Article 39 requires the state to direct its policy towards securing a adequate means of livelihood for all citizens, b distribution of ownership and control of material resources of the community to subserve common good, c an economic system which does not lead to concentration of wealth, d equal pay for equal work for both men and women, e health and strength of workers, f opportunities and facilities for children to develop in a healthy manner and be protected from exploitation. Articles 39 clause A added by the 42nd amendment requires the state to ensure equal justice and free legal aid to the poor. Article 40 requires the state to take steps to organize village panchayats and to endow them with such powers as may be necessary to enable them to function as units of self-government. Article 41 directs the state to make effective provision for securing the right to work, right to education, right to public assistance in case of unemployment, old age, sickness and disability. 
आर्टिकल फोर्टी टू आस्क फॉर प्रोविजन फॉर जस्ट एंड ह्यूमेन कंडीशन ऑफ वर्क एंड फॉर मटर्निटी रिलीफ आर्टिकल फोर्टी थ्री डायरेक्ट द स्टेट टू सिक्योर टू ऑल वर्कर्स एग्रीकल्चरल इंडस्ट्रियल और अदरवाइज लिविंग वेजेस इन पर्टिकुलर प्रमोट कॉटेज इंडस्ट्रीज आर्टिकल फोर्टी थ्री क्लॉज ए इंसर्टेड बाय द फोर्टी सेकेंड अमेंडमेंट स्पीक्स फॉर द पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ वर्कर्स इन मैनेजमेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज आर्टिकल फोर्टी फोर डायरेक्ट द स्टेट टू मेक एफर्ट्स टू सिक्योर अ यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड थ्रू आउट द टेरिटरी ऑफ इंडिया आर्टिकल फोर्टी फाइव डायरेक्ट द स्टेट टू प्रोवाइड फॉर फ्री एंड कंपल्सरी एजुकेशन for children up to 14 years within a period of 10 years from the commencement of the constitution article 45 has been amended by the 86th constitution amendment act 2002 the amended article says that the state shall endeavor to provide early childhood care and education for all children until they complete the age of 6 years Article 46 speaks of promotion of educational and economic rights of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and other weaker sections and protection to these persons from social injustice and exploitation. Article 47 directs the state to raise the level of nutrition and to improve the standard of living and health of people. and to enforce prohibition on intoxicating drinks and drugs article 48 requires the state to organize agriculture and animal husbandry on modern and scientific lines it prohibits cow slaughter article 48 clause a inserted by the 42nd amendment directs the state to protect and improve the environment and safeguard forests and wildlife article 49 directs the state to protect and maintain places of historic or artistic interest article 50 directs the state to work towards separating the judiciary from the executive article 51 directs the state to endeavor to promote international peace and amity maintain honorable relations between the nations foster respect for international law and treaty obligations and encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration directives in other parts of the constitution besides the directives in part 4 there are certain other directives in the constitution also non justiciable these include article 350 clause a which calls upon the state to provide adequate facilities for instruction in mother tongue at primary school level to children from linguistic minority groups article 351 calls upon the union to promote the spread and development of hindi to enable it to become the medium of expression of all the parts of the composite culture of india article 335 supports the claims of the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes to appointments in government service subject to the maintenance of efficiency of administration significance the directive principles are not enforceable in courts so what is the utility of including them in the constitution how can a government be made to implement them it may be pointed out however that no government can afford to ignore them without running the risk of losing popularity with the people it is a duty of the government to apply these principles in making laws the directives amplify what is said in the preamble that the goal of the indian polity is a welfare state they are moral precepts 
and the courts are increasingly taking the principles into consideration while interpreting the constitution implementation while the directive principles have not been fully translated into action it cannot be denied that the various governments have put in some effort in this direction the directive in article 39 clause b has influenced legislation to fix land ceilings and remove intermediaries such as zamindars article 40 has led to several laws for organizing village panchayats article 43 is seen working in the formation of several boards to help develop cottage industries legislation for compulsory education at primary level exists as directed by article 45 various measures have been taken to protect historical monuments forests and wildlife efforts have been made to organize agriculture along modern and scientific lines cow slaughter is banned in many states a legal aid system has been established some states have legislated for public assistance in case of unemployment old age and disability however on the whole implementation of the legislations giving importance to the directive principles has been slow and has not shown the desired effect of removing economic social and political injustices nor has the tendency of wealth been concentrated in the hands of a few been retarded prohibition has proved a sad experience as states find themselves caught in the dilemma of practical difficulties and loss of revenue political parties are reluctant to agree to structural changes in the existing property relations because they do not want to hurt their vote banks fundamental rights and directive principles comparison contrast and relative importance there is no doubt that both the fundamental rights and the directive principles of state policy are important features of the constitution however they differ from each other in certain points furthermore there is also controversy about which is more important in case of a conflict between the two are the fundamental rights to have primacy over the directive principles or vice versa differences fundamental rights seek to protect the individual from state encroachment the directive principles are aimed at the promotion of general welfare of society fundamental rights constitute limitations upon state action the directive principles are positive instructions to the government to take steps to establish a just social economic and political order the fundamental rights are justiciable the directive principles are not enforceable by the courts if the state has not implemented them if there is no law enacted to carry out the policy stipulated in any of the directives no individual or state for that matter can violate any existing law under the pretext of following a directive in other words legislation is required before any directive is implemented the fundamental rights on the other hand are guaranteed by the constitution relative importance During the first 16 years of the operation of the constitution the directive principles were considered subordinate to the fundamental rights the court struck down a number of laws enacted to implement directive principles on the ground that they violated the fundamental rights the conflict has its root in the fact that fundamental rights are enforceable by the courts while the directive principles are not however the government tried to overcome the problem by amending the constitution 
When the Supreme Court laid down in the Golaknath case that the fundamental rights cannot be abridged to implement the directives, the government tried to overcome the limitation in 1971 through the 24th Amendment which gave Parliament the right to amend fundamental rights.